right, hey everyone. Had a great meeting on Saturday. Just want to do a quick recap and talk about our goals for the next couple of weeks. And um, really great meeting. Like it was another one of those meetings, really dynamic, a lot of good discussion. That's what I love about these meetings, these smaller groups, you know. Um, it's not so much me getting up there and presenting information, but really just getting feedback and experiences and things. And I think we all learn from that kind of stuff. So it's been really, really great. So, um, you know, one of the things that I kind of realized as we were going through that and then also afterwards did some thinking about it is, um, you know, I don't want anyone to walk away from this program feeling like this was about aesthetics because I know that we call it the Adipus Purist and Fat Loss Program, um, but that's really not what it's about. This is really about optimizing and optimizing feeling amazing, which over the long term means optimizing health markers and, and all the great things that we're looking for from something like this. And of course, body composition plays into it because the more that we nudge the body into self-sufficiency and fat burning, you know, we are going to be burning excess body fat, you know, but I mean, what we're looking for are these hormonal and genetic responses from the body um, in response to doing all these appropriate things. So. So really what this program is about is about optimizing feeling amazing and it's also about optimizing what we call self-sufficiency, okay? So, and the body composition piece kind of takes care of itself as we go through this. So <clears throat> this is all about better health and of course, you know, for better health we need to focus on things like maximizing nutrient intake, which is why we talk a little bit about superfoods. Um, you know, obviously uh, structuring our daily eating the way that we recommend, but also having um, you know, the purest uh, guidelines in place, which means nothing in that moderated a lot category, but then also messing with blood sugar handling, you know. So if we had to tie together this whole concept of this purest and fat loss program, it would be this, and I would say that this would be the order that you'd want to work on if you had to prioritize which things that you were messing with if you weren't comfortable messing with all these things at this point, which I think most of us are at the point that we've kind of, we've been able to keep up with all the different goals, but if you're trying to prioritize things, I'd say, the formula for optimal health and feeling amazing has got to be 100% real food according to our purist guidelines, which means that those things in the moderated a lot category, like that just doesn't need to happen that often. You know, we had uh, a little party slash, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, get together type thing. And of course, there's a bunch of approved desserts and things brought in. That's great, you know, because we don't have those kind of events that often. But, um, but those should be very few and far between. You know, they definitely should not be on a daily basis. And so I'd follow those guidelines that we have in the chart. But for me personally, it's like I'm never going to be doing that stuff unless it's just like it's somewhere else that I go to and someone else has prepped it. All right, so 100% purist guidelines, rarely venturing into that moderated a lot category. Um, obviously, you want to manage portions where it counts. And I'm every night when I do my fruit and my starches, I pack my little mason jar full, half full, or a little bit more than that, because otherwise I kind of don't have an idea of how much I'm consuming of that stuff. So we want to manage portions where it counts, and where it counts for us is going to be with the carbohydrate intake. Um, we had some questions in the meeting, I think it was from Adam, that asked, like, what if we don't like starches or we don't feel good on or don't feel like, you know, we need them or something along those lines. And so you don't have to do them every night, but I would say that you don't want to be low carb indefinitely. You definitely want to have them in there. And I think what Adam was doing is like, you know, maybe a couple nights a week he would have some sweet potatoes or something like that. And I think that's perfect. You know, I think that's great. I think there's no right or wrong answer there. I think you just want to make sure that we're not doing anything in any extreme for any significant period of time. We want to bounce it in and out of all this stuff. Um, so, um, purest guidelines, you know, 100% real food, fresh produce, not, nothing in the moderated a lot category that often, um, uh, managing portions where it counts, nurturing natural space in between meals, for most of us should mean two meals a day, sometimes maybe three meals, which looks like two meals and a snack in between or something along those lines. Um, then we want to manage blood sugar levels using a glucometer because that's our indirect way of measuring insulin. And then we want to get into extended fasting. So, so summing all that up, 100% fresh real food, managing portions where it counts with the carbohydrates, nurturing natural space, monitoring your blood sugar, and then getting into extended fasting. All right, that's the deal. That's it. That's it. That's what's making me feel amazing each and every day. You know? So a little bit on fasting, because that's kind of where we're at in this program now. Um, if you haven't completed the blood sugar testing, of course, that's going to still be your priority. Um, but let's get into the fasting piece. Had some questions. I don't know if I answered them, um, you know, to my satisfaction when we were in the meeting. But so, you know, fasting, it, it's, we're one of the few animal species, mammal species on the planet, that can actually go extended periods of time without food unless, you know, there's some animals that go into hibernation where they slow down their metabolic rate. But we're one of the few mammals that can actually keep our metabolic rate 
and transition over to a new fuel source without having any food in our system. So, or for an extended period of time. Now this was an evolutionary adaptation that evolved, you know, from periods of being with and without, you know. And so what happens is in a true fasting state, you're going to switch over to this new fuel source. And when you do this, like your body, your cells are making more mitochondria. They're making themselves more efficient with energy production. And we start to use this new fuel source, which is basically creating ketones from fatty acids. And the benefit of that is that, you know, the brain runs on glucose. A lot of the cells run on glucose, but they can also run on this, uh, what, what's almost like used as glucose, but it's a fat-based version of it that's created from excess body fat, from, from uh, breaking down triglycerides. And, um, and so because we developed this evolutionary trait, we can go extended periods of time when we make this transition over and we see better brain function and we don't see any muscle wasting. So a lot of people think, okay, well, if I go through a fast, that means my body's going to start breaking down my muscle tissue. And that's just not the case at all. Because think about it. And then also people just assume that they're going to get really lethargic and tired and have a really hard time with it. But think about it like this. You know, if my ancestors would go a period of time without food and then get really tired and lethargic and not be able to think straight and, and perform normally or even better, then those people would not have survived. Like they would have not passed on their evolutionary traits and so, or the genetic traits. So our ancestors developed this capacity to go extended periods of time because my priority when I don't have food is to find food. And whether that takes a few hours or a few days or a few weeks or whatever, you know, I have to be able to transition over to this new fuel source that gives me the capacity to do that and still think optimally and still perform optimally. And that's exactly what happens. So when you get into a true fasted state, you have better brain function and it's extremely muscle sparing because from an evolutionary perspective, that's what it had to be, okay? So now the trick there is you just don't want to, um, you know, do like a reduced, you know, way of eating. Like fasting needs to be fasting. You need to completely be empty, uh, you know, minus some of the, the different tips that we talked about. And we'll talk about here in just a second. But, um, you know, you want minimal caloric input and you definitely don't want to be eating solid food because then you know the body gets confused and then maybe it will slow down the metabolic rate but you're going to see once you get into an extended period of maybe 48 hours or something along those lines most of us are going to transition over and feel amazing like i feel great the only thing that suffers when i'm in an extended fast is my uh, glycolytic performance or my metcon type performance because you do deplete all your glycogen stores in your muscles and your liver and that's fine because your body's using your excess body fat for energy but, um, you know, you don't have the capacity to get into that emergency fuel source, that sugar fuel source. Um, so it's just, you know, you just have to understand sometimes performance suffers. I think my strength stays the same for the most part, but my metabolic type stuff kind of goes down. So the goals for the next two weeks would be, number one, prioritize your blood sugar testing. So if you haven't completed that, make sure that you do fasting sugar testing to manipulate your previous day activities. Make sure that you're testing around your safe starches to get an idea of which ones are causing you to stay elevated for an extended period of time. And then of course, those would be things that you want to remove from the diet for the most part. And you can always come back and retest them if you want to. And then um, we want to also start to test around meals and see what meals are messing with us. Because then those meals, we can actually start to nitpick what's in those meals and maybe it has nothing to do with carbohydrates. You know, you never know. Um, so blood sugar testing, definitely complete that, finish that, keep doing it. I've been blood sugar testing for a long time. I always do it. I always do spot checks and just mess with things here and there. The second one is we want to mess with some extended fasting together as a team. And so what I recommend is after the fourth, which is Tuesday, I say, let's all do like a 36 hour fast on Wednesday or Thursday, you know, so maybe skip, skip all food on Wednesday or skip all food on Thursday. Um, and then we can do, you know, a couple of intermittent or um, 16 hour or 24 hour fast. And then next week, I'd like those of us that are ready to experiment with a 48 hour or a three day fast. All right. Um, completely optional. Don't have to do it. Um, you know, one thing that we did talk about in the meeting was uh, the difference. So, you know, when you're when you're in some of these fasted states, you'll have hunger that comes in waves like it's like thoughts you know it comes in waves and it goes and if you if you change your focus or you drink some water or do something like uh, it just goes away and you don't even remember it you know and it just comes and goes like that you know so we always say that when we're doing these fasting protocols especially in the general SHT that you want to pay attention and just ask the question like is this something I can kind of push through comfortably or am I so freaking low blood sugar feeling that I have to eat or else I'm gonna go crazy 
you definitely still want to have that kind of an attitude, but I would really start to push the boundaries and really ask the question, like, you know, maybe drink some water and just sit with it for a little bit and see how uncomfortable it actually is and try to get through that. Now, there's going to be a time at which you have to eat. Like, there's just, you know it, you can tell, you know, and I'm not sure how to tell you how to tell, but you'll know. But I do want you to pause with it and just ask the question, is this the time that I have to eat or can I kind of push the boundary a little bit? What I noticed is once I got past that two day mark, I'd have hunger come in waves. And then if I just preoccupied myself with something else or meditated or drank some water or had some bone stock or something like that, like I feel fine. So um, now some things you can do in the fast. I don't have my sheet. So in your guide, you have a page on tips and hints and I can't remember in order what it is, but obviously you can do coffee and tea. You can do a little bit of fat. You can do like some cream. You know, those of you that like to do the whole blending the butter and all that junk, I don't even like to call it the B word, but we used to call it buttered coffee back in the day, but before that whole bulletproof thing came out. But I think cream is just way easier, more simple, you know, still gives you MCTs and stuff. Um, but anyway, so if you want to do a little bit of coffee and tea with a little bit of fat, that's perfectly fine. MCT oil is fine. Um, but then also you can do, especially when you get into these extended fasts, a little bit of kombucha, I'd say kombucha maybe twice a day, eight ounces, a cup of it or something like that. And then you can also do bone stock twice a day. I, I like to do bone stock in the morning and then bone stock in the evening before I go to bed. And, um, and I think that's about it. You know, I'd reserve the bone stock and kombucha for the extended fast and I wouldn't really mess with bone stock or kombucha in the middle of a 16 or 24 hour fast, you know. So um, that's all I got today, guys. Love you so much and have really enjoyed this journey. I'm taking away some things for sure. I'm going to be 100% fresh food all the time, except on special occasions that are out of my control. And that in and of itself has been the biggest game changer for me. My performance is through the roof. My body composition is the best it's ever been. And that's even without the blood sugar testing and stuff. So um, love you guys. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye. Stay. <clears> Thank <throat>